I'm talking about human interaction. I'm talking about substantive communication. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can grab and use to set goals, create, and unlock your potential for changing yourself and the world. And now let's get to the show. there and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thanks so much for being here. All right, cool. I'm excited to talk about this uh, topic today because it's a silly thing, but it works so incredibly well and it stops people in their tracks. I'm talking a lot about, especially if you're shy or socially awkward, how to start conversations. How do you get into a conversation in a way that feels substantive and good without also feeling like you're being a complete idiot, right? That's that's the thing. Because so often when you are shy or when you are socially awkward, you feel like, oh, if I'm really myself, everyone's going to be like, ew, right? I feel that way too. There's not a person in this world who doesn't have some level of that. The most famous communicators, the biggest names in acting in and celebrities, they're often socially awkward and they say it themselves. They're like, you know what? I'm really shy. And I got into acting to overcome my shyness. That I, I, So many people have said that. And pe- so many people are like, I'm actually an introvert and I needed to get out of my shell. And so I joined a choir or I started singing or I started performing or I started dancing. And that's what a lot of us go through, right? A lot of us feel like we are complete, awkward, incapable of doing things people. And it's just not true, right? That's the thing that we need to remember is that there are people out there who are just like you, even if you feel awkward, even if you feel completely incapable of starting conversations, of making those kinds of connections, there are lots of us that feel the same way. And some people, very few people, this comes naturally to the vast majority of us, we have to learn. We have to figure out how to do it in a way that feels both good to us and also that is effective with the people we're trying to communicate with. Very few of us, and well, none of us are born with language, right? Let's call it that. There's not a single one of us that's born knowing how to speak. We all have to learn. And really, we're not born really knowing how to listen either. We're born screaming. We scream for attention. We scream to get treated well. We scream to get cared for when we were babies. And then over time, we pick up all of these other niceties and we learn how to listen. And the problem with listening is that very few of us are actually ever taught how to listen well. Ooh, that's a tough one, right? We we think we're listening. We oh yeah, I think I'm paying attention. But I'm actually not. I'm not actually taking in all of the guidance that I'm getting from the person who's saying things to me. I'm not. I'm often going, "Oh, I'm I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening." But I have to work at it in order to listen effectively. And Dr. Albert Morabian talked about the 73855 rule, which is 7% of what you take in is the words that someone is saying. 38% is the intonation with which they're saying it. And 55% is body language. Is it any wonder we don't often understand the person who's talking to us? I mean, think about it. How is it that we're not taught that to begin with? Only 7% are the actual words that you take in. 38% you take in the intonation, the sound, the tone, the, the, you know, and you know how they say, oh, you had a tone. Well, yeah, that's it. That's so much of what's going on. And 55% is the body language. Imagine the difference between someone going, I'm leaning towards you versus I'm sort of leaning away and I've got my arms crossed. Two totally different vibes. And paying attention to that is very important when you're listening. So a lot of this is that listening bit. And I'm going to talk a lot more about all of that 73855 in the future. But right now, the reason I brought it up is because if you're going to ask questions, if you're going to try to communicate, if you're going to try to interact, 
you're going to need to listen, right? It's not just about saying something and then bulldozing over whatever they say. It's about asking questions and then listening effectively for the answers. And they call it active listening, but that's not the only thing. It's an openness. It's open body language. It's an open heart and an open spirit that really wants to know, really wants to hear, and really wants to understand what the other person is saying. So much of it is that. Work on those skills. Work on listening to the words. Work on listening to the tone. Work on taking in and understanding the body language. That will help you immeasurably become a better communicator, no matter how shy you are. This is something that Dale Carnegie says in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and it's so important. People love hearing the sound of their voice. People love talking about themselves. So if you give someone an opportunity to talk about themselves, they will love you. They will adore you. Okay? Really important to think about in this way. So here's what I want to say. I love asking people questions about themselves. And it also makes you a better communicator. That's the thing that we don't get. It makes you a much better communicator if you just ask someone questions about them. And Dale Carnegie said it right. He said, and people love hearing the sound of their voices. They love speaking about themselves, their ideas, their interests, their loves, their desires, even their regrets. They love it. And in fact, I did this thing once where I went to a festival that I was going to be working and I made the conscious choice. This was a little, a little miniature study I did. I made the conscious choice that I was not going to offer up any information about myself at all. Instead, I was going to ask everyone I saw and met questions about themselves. And I was going to say nothing about myself. So everyone I met, I asked them questions about themselves, about who they were, about what they liked, about what they loved, about what they wanted, about what they did for fun. I'm going to come back to that one. And you would not believe how many people came back to me at the end of the festival and were just like, oh, I love you so much. You're such a great conversationalist. I love talking to you. And I was like, "Uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And here's the thing. I didn't really talk. Other than to ask them questions about themselves, I didn't really say anything. And they thought I was an amazing conversationalist. That is the key right there. People will think you're an amazing conversationalist if you don't talk and instead if you listen. Let me say that again because I think it's important. People will think that you're an amazing conversationalist if instead of doing all the talking, you listen to them. That is gold right there. Take that in. Really, it's gold. All right, so there's part one. Part two, I said I was going to come back to, what do you do for fun? That is one of my favorite questions to ask people I first meet, particularly in any sort of professional setting. Because here's the thing. Everyone is expecting, what do you do? As in, what do you do for work? They're expecting that and they're ready to go and give you the answer for what they do for work. And I always go, so, Jeremiah, what do you do for fun? And they kind of go, huh, and why? Because it's shocking. Everyone wants to know what they do. No one asks them what they do for fun. And let me tell you something. Unless you're one of the lucky few who adores what you do, you like what you do for fun more than you like your job. And guess what? You want to talk more about what you do for fun then you want to talk about your job. So that's the thing that I do. I ask people not what they do for their job, for their living. I ask them what they enjoy. I ask them what they do for fun. Great way to begin conversations. And again, particularly if you're shy, if you are shy, asking someone what they do for fun helps them get open and excited about what they're passionate about. And then if you're shy, you can just ask follow-up questions and have a wonderful conversation without ever getting anxious about the fact that you're going to have to say a bunch of stuff because that person is already off to the races. They are talking about something they love and they are thrilled to do it. So the next time that you are in any kind of new situation and you want to strike up a conversation, hi, I'm Isolde, Uh, hi. Oh, so Mark, I'll say, what do you do for fun? 
and watch them just get shocked and happy at the same time. This happened to me the other day. I was at a party and I was sitting down and a bunch of people had sat, had sat down. We were all chatting. And that's exactly what happened. I met this gentleman named David and I sat down and I said, hey, David, what do you do for fun? And he went, huh. literally, he went, huh. wow, no one's ever asked me that. And I said, well, I'm asking. And he said, well, actually, and then he proceeded to tell me what he did for fun, what he enjoyed doing, which was traveling and and coming over to see his sweetie who lives here in New York City. And it was really interesting to sort of have that moment of sizzle in the air when he was like, wow, this is so different. And he remembered our conversation. That's the important thing. People who you surprise and delight. And you've heard this, if you are if you study marketing at all, they talk about that a lot. But you're not trying to sell anybody anything. You're just trying to get to know people, right? That's the thing. That's the difference here. I'm not giving you sales techniques or whatever. I'm talking about human interaction. I'm talking about substantive communication. And being curious about people and asking them what they do for fun is one of the best ways to do it because immediately they get to open up about something they love, about something they're already passionate about. Bonus points if you happen to know something about it and you can offer your own observations and ideas. At the same time, hey, this is at least something that can get you, especially if you're shy, it can get you embroiled in a lovely and delightful conversation for quite some time. And soon I'm going to talk about how to get out of conversations because sometimes you're at the end of a conversation and you're like, well, I have to leave. I don't know how to end this. And I'm going to talk about that next. But I wanted you to get this wonderful, super easy technique to get yourself to the point where people just think you're an amazing conversationalist. Those those few things that I talked about earlier and then the, this gold bonus question, what do you do for fun? I love this. It's a, it works. It, I've never had it not work and I've employed it hundreds of times. It's a beautiful and easy way, again, especially if you're shy, to put the focus on the other person, help them feel like they are on top of the world because they're the ones who are getting to talk and they're the ones who are getting to talk about something they love and are passionate about. And they have a willing audience. They have a willing listener who is listening actively and authentically to what they have to say. No better communication tool than that. All righty, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Innovative Mindset Podcast. Much, much more to come about this. I'm very excited to talk more about how to do that. If you want to know more about my communication techniques, you can pick up my book, actually. I don't talk about it much on here, even though I recently did the entire audio book on the podcast. Speak From Within is basically how to engage and inspire anyone you're talking with, whether it's an audience of one or 1,000. I would love to talk to you more about it. You can book a discovery call if you want and chat with me about communication techniques. Let's see if we can work together. I would love to help you break out of your shell and become the person you want to be. Until next time, this is Isolde Tractenberg once again reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2022. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.